DC podcast number 15. I'm Cordy Wise. I'm Shane Blankenship. Okay. We are still talking about Paul, as promised. Yes. Someone who keeps the kingdom mindset when he has gone through so much, like physically, mentally, emotionally. Mm -hmm. And we want to know how he can keep that. Because when there's uh, proverbial bombs exploding in your life... Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I got to put out this fire. Ooh, I got to put out this fire. Ooh, I got, and, and then all of a sudden you lose focus. And Paul never did that, right. or at least it doesn't seem like he did. Yeah, it doesn't appear that way in the letters that he wrote anyway. It's like he had a pretty good grasp on that at some point. I don't point. know how. I don't know how. I, mean, I, I really think this is, this is so elementary and um, it seems like a cop-out. But his life had been changed by the living God. And that's what changed everything. Like the the whole reason why he's able to call them to what he calls them to, the whole reason why he's able to do what he does um, is because his life's been changed by Jesus. And that changed everything for him. Okay, my life's been changed by Jesus, but I don't know if I can be like Paul. Yeah, I think the found I think the foundation I mean, I, I agree with you. Like my I'd say, yeah, my life's been changed, but I don't know if it's been changed like that. Um, and I think that's where his life was not just changed, but constantly immersed in it, you know, yeah. um, that, he, you know, here's a guy who went from killing Christians, um, and causing that kind of struggle to finding that struggle for himself. You know, here's a guy who was called in suffering for people's lives who would end up going through suffering. Um, but he willingly did it and walked into it and knew that that was going to happen to him. I mean, Jesus tell, told him, Hey, I'm going to show you how much you're going to have to suffer for my name now. Um, but he was like, Fine, like it doesn't compare to the riches of the gospel of Christ of knowing God. I'll suffer and go through whatever I have to go through because this right here just changed my life. I just went from dead to alive. I'm not the same human being. I'm not the same person dead anymore. Well, and he, we've been talking too. He was very like mission minded. Like there was no bomb that could explode around him that didn't mm. keep his mind mm -hmm. on what the mission was, which was to move the kingdom forward yeah. and I have to ask myself in my own life do I get distracted by the coronavirus or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is in in our lives right now and keep myself from pushing the mission forward and I bet you I do yeah no I guarantee you I, I, I and I probably do as well and most of us do I think that's our default you know we are more me minded than we are kingdom minded. minded okay so what do we do Richard? we got to move from from Focusing on ourselves, I think, to focusing on him, to, to, to quit trying to build our own kingdom and actually focus on moving his kingdom forward, building his kingdom, if you will. I mean, that's, that's ultimately the purpose. Um, to be a part of the church is to move that mission forward. Like, that's the, that's the calling. That's the highest calling of the church. And you're either a part of it or you're not. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I mean, I, I believe I would argue, and Scripture would, would certainly back it up, that if you're not going to participate in moving that mission forward, then you're not being the church. And um, my pastor growing up was Pastor Steve Ayers. He pastors Hillview Heights Church. Mine too. And um, so I, uh, I, I'm incredibly thankful for the influence and leadership um, that, that, you know, he showed me and, 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 um, and had on my life for sure. At the church that I'm at now um, here at Greenwood, the pastor who was here before I came here ended up going to this church in Auburn and um, Auburn, Kentucky, for those of you who are local watching. Um, so so the story I'm about to tell you happened before he got there, right? So when, when Brother Jim left here, that's where he went. Um, so this happened sometime between me coming here, but before Brother Jim got there, because it was because like he, he retired and okay. this was before. And I, by the way, I haven't heard this story. She hasn't heard this story. Okay. Um, so um, Steve goes to this church and I just won't name the church. And um it, it's like he's doing this revival. Like they asked him, and that's that's Pastor Steve's bread and butter. Like right. he is, he is unbelievable in a in a revival kind of setting, and just calling people Get to follow Jesus. Excited. So he's talking to this church, and he's like, um, "When's the last time that you all baptized somebody?" And like he in the message is asking, "Hey, when's the last time you all baptized?" So he's waiting for a response. He's like, "That's not a rhetorical question." When? And I think someone said either April or May. And at this point, it's maybe. September or October or something. He goes, oh, well, that's not so bad. He goes, no, the last April or May, so more than a year. He goes, you mean to tell me y'all haven't led one person to Jesus and baptized one person in more than a year? And he's like, that's right. And Pastor Steve just said, well, then you need to change the name on your sign out there and don't call this such and such church. You need to call this such and such Bible club. 
He goes, because apparently y'all just coming in here and studying the Bible, but you're not moving the mission forward. And that's the, he didn't say moving the mission forward. I'm throwing that in there. But that's, I mean, that's the idea. That's the concept of, I mean, if you're just gathering together, you're just gathering to sing some songs or even talk about what Jesus said, but you're not actually getting in the fight, then you're not being the church. Yeah. The church is being the hands and feet of Jesus. That's right. So Mm -hmm. it moves the mission forward. Well, and it's sort of on the same lines. If you listen to Shane's sermon on Sunday, the prostitute story. Yeah. I mean, like he, he's, he, he really put himself out there. Absolutely. For Agnes, was that her name? For Agnes, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, he didn't have to do that, but he showed Jesus to someone who hadn't seen Jesus maybe ever. Yeah. And I would say that he was right in the middle of yeah. the battle. I mean, it wasn't like a bad thing, but, you know, <laughs> right. it's, uh, he's hanging out with a bunch of ladies of the night, as you right. called it. Yeah. So I really like that story. I like both those stories. But you probably should go and watch that now so that you have context of what she's talking about just there, because I'm sure your mind could go a lot of different ways. So that's whatever happens, part one, if you happen to be listening to this some, sometime later you, down the road. That, it was It was great. I loved it. <laughs> Well, let's move on because I read something this week and it blew my mind. And maybe you have also heard this and or given people this advice. God's not going to give you any more than you can handle. Hashtag lies. Um, I mean, that's at the end of the day. That's a lie. That's not not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible and it's not true. God won't give you more than you can handle. Like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, I mean, really, to quote Declan off of Leap Year, the movie, um, it's it's like it doesn't it doesn't even make sense because eventually, I mean, think about it in this context. Eventually, something's going to happen to you. You're going to get something that will kill you, which means you didn't handle it. Like eventually, you're going to die of something. Whether you're it'll you're be more than you can handle. Yeah, it was more than you can handle if you died from it. So that can't possibly be true that God won't give you more than you can handle. Well, first thing though, hang on. Let's let's talk about context though, okay. and how something can get so easily misconstrued. Mm-hmm. The scripture that we have pulled up is actually probably what people me are trying to say, right? Well, when, this is exactly where it comes from. So this is First Corinthians chapter ten. This is where people like change what it means or yeah. have perceived what it means and called it. Don't Twisted. you know? God God won't give you more than you can handle. But here's what he what the Apostle Paul actually says to the church at Corinth. Um, so whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. No temptation, and here's context, no temptation that has come upon you except what is common to humanity. So just to pause for just a minute. Like the temptation that you deal with, the temptation that I deal with, the temptation that you, you, know, that you deal with, that the church at Corinth dealt with, it's all common. Mm-hmm. Like the, there's, it's not a new temptation. It's common to humanity. Everyone is susceptible, susceptible. susceptible. There you go, to it. But God is faithful. So there, here's the, that's a powerful statement. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able. But with temptation, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. So listen to the context again. So God won't give you more than you can handle. That's what everybody says. Here's what it says, though. Um, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able. But with temptation, he will also provide a way out so that you will be able to bear it. So what's the, the I, I guess, the qualifier there? Is it, um, now, you're going to have a temptation that if you stick around, it will overcome you. Mm-hmm. It will mess up you and your life and your marriage and your children and your job and all that kind of stuff. Well, and even in a small way, you know, small temptations, you know, you're just like, man, I, I just gave in. I yeah. Mean, I just gave in. Threw off your diet. Food. Just to say the same thing. <laughs> but, you know, so I'm thinking that. But I'm also, Shane, thinking of keeping the um, the kingdom mindset. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because how many things can we read on Facebook or Instagram or watch on YouTube and then we misconstrue it or somebody else, you know, twist it to the way that their perspective mm-hmm. kind of sees it. And then it's completely wrong. Yeah. It's, it's like, that's not even what the person was trying to say. And, or that's not what the person, you know, it, it's like, they're not seeing eye to eye and this right here, God won't give you more than you can handle. And God will give you a way out when you're tempted. Yeah. Um, it's two different things. It's com- two completely different things. And that's why we take it and we make it mean for what we want it to mean. Um, and then ultimately, it just pushes people's redneck buttons down the road. Because when they think about it, they're like, oh, well, that's not true. Um, and if that's not true, then what else are you saying that's not true? Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's, I think, <laughs> part of like keeping the kingdom mind- mindset, which is 
difficult. Like we're not sitting here saying that this is an easy thing to do, even though it seems like Paul can just do it while he's shackled to the prison walls and peeing on himself. Like right. it seems like that's an easy thing to do, but it's it's not an easy thing to do. Mm. And so we were just trying to think of like ways that we've seen it like secularly mm-hmm. um, or just like modern in modern days. Yeah. And I think you see it the most on, on Facebook, yep. how people aren't keeping the kingdom mindset. And I just wanted to try to like bring that out and talk about it. Yeah. So for the, for the, the, the social media piece of it, I think the Facebook, um, I don't think Instagram is as bad. It's not. Um, it's a, it's a different, it. different, different, different. <laughs> you know, platform, I guess, but Facebook is certainly there and it gave a voice to everybody who wants a voice. Um, and I guess there's some good things to that, but there's also a lot of baggage that comes with that. And we certainly see that, especially among people who call themselves followers of Christ and what's coming out of their mouths isn't Christ-like. Um, and what they're choosing to, to, um, to, to stand firm on and to take a stand on um, is a little crazy sometimes, I think, when you really get in the weeds of it. And that's, I think, you know, when you talked about, you know, the mindset piece and um, really allowing what you're reading and what you're absorbing to affect your mindset and pull you away from that kingdom mindset, I mean, I think that's important that we, that we think about that because part of what it means to, um, I think, stand firm, uh, this is going to come out, uh, the message that's coming out this week, which will be Whatever Happens Part 2, but he says, stand firm um, in one spirit and in one accord. And in some translations, it, it translates the word accord as one mind. Um, and so that mindset, in order to, to, to stand firm, um, that mindset is, is important. And um, I mean, to talk about the kingdom mindset, if you will, to stand firm in a kingdom mindset, um, that means, to stand firm means that you're not giving up ground, mm-hmm. right? That you're holding the line on this, that I'm not giving this away. So when it comes to the battle of your mind, I think that's probably more than what you're giving up more than anything. You know, this isn't about giving up your house to the enemy or sure. giving up your car or uh, giving up your guns to the government or whatever you're getting worked up about and, you know, you're going to stand some ground on um, these days. I mean, pick and choose your battles. Um, that's not what it's talking about. Stand firm on your mind um, and what you're giving your mind over to. Like, that's where I think it gets really important because God is transforming your life through the transformation of your mind. That's what the scripture says. How does God transform your life? By renewing your mind, transforming the way you think, transforming the way you perceive, transforming the way you see things. So don't give up that ground in your head of what God is doing and give it over to what people are talking about on Facebook or on social media that is completely robbing you of that kingdom mindset. Well, so a couple of things, I'm like writing it down furiously is I think get face to face with someone. If mm-hmm. you if you're going to battle something out over Facebook, it's um if it's that important, then maybe you should sit down and have a cup of coffee with them with yeah. your mask on and talk about it because yep. I think once you get face to face with someone, it's really hard to call them like a blah blah blah. Um yeah. you know, you start to be like <laughs> compassionate, you know, right. or, or, or probably just lend your heart a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing that it made me think of. And the second thing is I want to make sure we make this clear is that God will give you more than you can handle. Yep. Um, so I think for some of us, like, I don't, it is a battle of the mind yeah. and for like, I know for me, I feel like I lose it a lot in mm-hmm. my mind, you know? And so like a lot of times I think like I, I can't handle anymore. I, I can't handle anymore, but I'm not, I like, I just go through it, you yeah. know? And so I know it's a sanctification process just to get stronger and stronger or for something to come out that wasn't there before. But the whole nature of what we're trying to say is that God actually will give you more. He, he will and he uses it. And that's important. Yeah. Like God is using more than you can handle in your life to do at least two things. One, to reveal something about who he is. And will reveal something about who you are. Who he made um, you to be. Yeah. That's right. I mean, um, case in point, um, one of my favorite stories is when Jesus sends all the disciples out on the water. Um, and he goes up on a mountain to pray. And a storm hits. And they're struggling at the oars. Um, it says they're struggling. And they're, the, the, the boat's being um, you know, tossed and buffeted by the wind and the waves. And um, they learn about what they're afraid of, um, what they're going through in that moment. But then in the next moment, they learn how powerful Jesus is that he can actually call the storm. Mm. So, Jesus, take the wheel. I mean, I said it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys out there. We, we want to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Send us a message. Yep. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.